Hey guys, MC and Mike here. Lifestyle games were always a huge hit or miss for me, usually resulting in boredom after a few days of playing. It's especially bad when the game in question lets you go at your own pace, which results in me being lazy somehow. I've already played several such as The Sims 4 and Animal Crossing New Leaf. But Mike, I hear you saying, why would you buy the newest Animal Crossing if you got bored of another entry in the series? Well, that was a huge factor I took into consideration when thinking about buying the game. In fact, I wasn't even gonna buy it on release because I wasn't sure I'd like it. However, after seeing some gameplay, I bit the bullet and bought a digital copy a few days before release. After all that, what do I think of the game? Well, I'm about to tell you. Let's talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons. For those unfamiliar with Animal Crossing, allow me to briefly summarize what it actually is. It's a lifestyle game where you live with animal villagers in a small town. You grow your town by collecting money from basic chores and investing it into town projects, new buildings, or even your own house. The name of your town can be whatever you want, so you can be as juvenile or creative as Nintendo will let you get away with in the arbitrarily small character limit. Beyond the in-game environment, it's a game that's typically played at your own pace, represented by the in-game time being synced with real-world time. To be able to do things that require no time limit, it makes the game all the more relaxing to casually play when you have the time. As for what to do in the game, you can... Go fishing. Catch bugs. Sell what you got. Find fossils in your town to donate to blathers. Repeat the last four things. After racking up tons of bells from those activities, typically people will invest into their loans for their house so they can expand and start theming their rooms. For example, I'm working on a Chinese-inspired imperialistic design for my main room, and in the back I have a room dedicated to the cursed holiday that was Bunny Day. A definite highlight is this gnome I have behind my bed that watches me while I sleep. What, you're telling me you don't have something stare into your soul while you sleep? Also, yes, I have three Nintendo Switches. You can never be too much of a gamer. You're gonna want to make sure to save a lot of bells, because the total cost to upgrade your house to its maximum size is 3,198,000 bells. That's three times as many bells as it took to upgrade your house completely in the original Animal Crossing for GameCube. As for shopping, there's a few places you can go to spend your hard-earned cash bells. First off is the terminal at the Resident Services building. Each day the selection refreshes, but fundamentally it boils down to two furniture items, a hat, an accessory, two shirts, a pair of pants, a pair of shoes, and a KK Slider song. Despite being only nine options, I think it's a healthy balance between clothing and decorations. One great thing about the Nook shopping feature is you can buy things you've already owned. If you accidentally sold that squat toilet you desperately need to complete your house, you can purchase it again and have it delivered to your home the day after. Another place you can buy stuff at is the Nook's Cranny. This store makes a return as an upgrade on your island and is your one-stop shop for your tools, wallpaper, flooring, and DIY recipes. Earlier I said you could catch fish and bugs and sell those for bells. On top of that, you can also donate them to the museum and work on the Critterpedia. It's an app on your Nook phone that keeps track of all the fish and bugs you've collected so far, and even tells you which ones you've donated to the museum if you're trying to complete it. However, some fish and insects can only be found in certain times of the year, so it's not something you can do in a single day grind fest. And some bugs, more specifically one bug, can be a pain in the butt to catch because TARANTULAS MAKE YOU FAINT IN THIS GAME! I can't tell you how many times I thought I caught a tarantula, only for my net to just barely miss it. They may be worth a lot of bells, but they're the spawn of Satan! Speaking of the museum, it got a major upgrade in this game. Now walking through the rooms and seeing all the stuff you've caught is just so visually impressive. My favorite being the fish area. Something about the lighting combined with the calming music just really speaks to me. I mentioned before that you can invest your bells into town projects. Well, those have certainly made their return in the forms of stairs, bridges, and inclines. Anywhere from 98,000 to 228,000 bells will get you a stylized bridge or incline to expand the explorability of your island. Bridges are nice to have early on since you don't get the item that lets you cross rivers until later in the game. 
In fact, bridges are practically required since when you first start the game, your island is purposefully built to isolate you in a corner of the island for a couple days before you can even build those bridges. If you're bored with always working on your own island and you want to see people that are probably doing better than you, you can visit a friend. I've gotta say, the online in Animal Crossing New Horizons is just a lot better compared to other games. When I first heard of the online features, I thought it was just going to be another laggy experience that was practically unplayable. However, I'm pleasantly surprised by how smooth the multiplayer worked. I've had only a handful of communication errors in the two months I've played this game so far, so that's definitely an improvement on Nintendo's part. You can open your island to just your friends like other Animal Crossing games, but you can also invite anyone with Dodo codes. These are randomly generated codes that let anyone join your island if they have said code. However, I'm gonna dock Nintendo a few metaphorical points for online. You see, when someone joins or leaves an island, everyone has to stop what they're doing and watch a cutscene of the person arriving or leaving the island. This can get tedious when you're a streamer and inviting your viewers to join your island, forcing you to sit through multiple cutscenes without being able to do anything. If we didn't have to sit through such a lengthy process for people to arrive, that'd be so much better. Music has always been a big part of Animal Crossing, mainly through the game's own musician, K.K. Slider. Aside from collecting K.K. songs in the game, Slider actually shows up to your island for a concert every Saturday once you meet certain requirements. This game has a total of 96 KK songs, and I'm probably using them as background music right now because they just sound so good. Each of these 96 tracks feel unique in their own right, and I hope to collect every single one. Aside from arranged music, there's also the return of the hourly music. After a few days, you'll start hearing different background music every hour of the day. It's a small but relaxing touch to the game, as the background music is pretty chill all the time. At the start of the game, you have the option to pick between four islands, all of which have different layouts. Every layout is unique in the shape of the river, number of ponds, and the location of the resident services building. In total, there's 30 different possible layouts in the game, so it's not a bad idea to reset to get the island you want. If your island design isn't perfect, don't panic. There's plenty of opportunities down the road that will let you expand and beautify your island to your heart's content. One of these new features is terraforming, which is a great addition to the game. When you meet certain requirements, you can get access to the Island Designer app, which initially lets you mess around with sand and dirt. However, for the low low price of 6,000 nook miles apiece, you can get access to editing water and cliffs, which can result in amazing creations like this one by MK Nintendo World. I can hear this picture and it sounds a lot like In all seriousness, terraforming has a lot to offer, as you can make paths, make waterfalls, and just make your island all the more aesthetically impressive. In addition to improving the look of your island, you can also upgrade your island's facilities. You start off with a resident services tent, which has the purpose of spending nook miles and paying off your debt. Not too long after, the twins Timmy and Tommy ask you to gather materials so they can develop Nook's Cranny, the small shop I mentioned earlier. It sells a few furniture items, replacement tools, and wallpaper and flooring for your house. Over time, you'll expand into more buildings including the Able Sisters shop, the museum, and Nook's Cranny will even get a well-deserved upgrade. It's this gradual upgrading process that really keeps you playing for days on end. New Horizons has introduced a wealth of new features to keep the gameplay fresh and entertaining. By far the most integral gameplay addition is the introduction to DIY crafting. This is a fundamental part of the game, as everything including your tools and furniture can be crafted via DIY recipes. Over time, you'll actually get rewarded nook miles for breaking your tools, so having to craft your 84th fishing rod is slightly redeeming in that respect. Speaking of breakable tools, that leads me to a small problem I have with the tools in this game. Back in New Leaf, only the axe was breakable before upgrading to the gold variant. The other tools had their own useful features when upgraded to gold, but tools never really broke in that game. However, this is where New Horizons falls short in my opinion. You see, gold tools have indeed returned, but not in the way you hoped. 
instead of being indestructible tools with really good bonuses, they're just tools that supposedly last significantly longer than their normal counterparts. One other problem is how to get the recipes. No, you can't buy them or get them via Nook Miles. These tools require ludicrous prerequisites. For example, the Golden Bug Net and Fishing Rod require you to finish the insect and fish parts of the Critterpedia. Considering that different fish and insects are found in different months of the year, this could very well take close to a year to do. What's worse is that once you complete the Critterpedia, there's no point in fishing or bug catching because by then you most likely would have turned to turnips for profit instead of anything else. What I'm getting at is that the requirements are time consuming, for the purpose of being time consuming. Normally that wouldn't be a bad thing given the nature of Animal Crossing games, but it feels arbitrary to require that much of a player over a long stretch of time only for the main use of the item to be redundant upon earning it. Nook Miles are a new currency introduced in New Horizons, which let you buy all kinds of decorations for your island, and one of the best things you can exchange them for is Nook Miles tickets, which allow you to travel to a mystery island. At the time of recording, there are 12 different mystery islands, with half of those being on the more rare side. Typically, these islands have their own distinctive qualities, like having fruit not native to your own island, allowing you to get only large-sized fish for max profit, and even an island that has five money rocks. However, the ones I just mentioned are on the aforementioned rare side, so you'll have to buy a few Nook Miles tickets if you want a chance at getting one of these rare islands. Additionally, if you have sold a plot of land on your own island, you can find villagers on these mystery islands and invite them to live on yours. This is how you primarily get villagers on your island, but buying a plot of land and waiting a couple days will get you a random villager too. If you get an island that has a villager you don't want, you can just grind some resources and ditch them for all eternity and be a heartless monster that is willing to put their own selfish priorities first before considering someone else's life, you piece of shit! Speaking of villagers, they've gotten a bit of improvement in terms of their daily routines. In past games, they usually just stand around awkwardly and do basically nothing but in New Horizons, they feel so much more alive. You can find them sitting under a tree with a drink in their hand, exercising in the town square, or even randomly sing like one of my villagers. She just has such a way with words. Anyway, I see this as a welcome change, as villagers feel more alive, as I said before. They actually look like they live legitimate lives, and it's an overall great improvement. While New Horizons has brought a wealth of new concepts, there were some sacrifices made. Well, to put it less tragically, characters were removed. One majorly noticeable change is the absence of Rossetti. I'm sure tons of people are happy to see him gone after he yelled at you about resetting your game. My personal theory is that with the auto-saving of New Horizons, there's no need for a character to issue a warning about resetting since your file is saved periodically anyway. A few other characters were added simply as replacements for older ones. A couple prime examples are CJ and Flick, who take the places of Chip and Nat respectively. On rare occasions, you can find them on your island, walking around, and they'll buy fish or bugs off of you for one and a half times their price. They're definitely nice to have around during a grind sesh. Aside from those two, we've seen almost no other characters come back. Other characters were just simply replaced by new concepts the game has to offer. An example is everyone's favorite singing turtle, Cap'n. Back in New Leaf, he'd be singing as he drove you to the vacation island, and he'd even sing to talk his song if you were stuck waiting to connect via Wi-Fi for long enough. Sadly though, he was replaced with the new Dodo Airlines and its features. On screen is a list of all the characters we've yet to see in New Horizons as of the writing of this script, meaning it's possible they could be added in future updates as we've seen with Red. It really is a shame to see so many characters leave after New Leaf, as some of them provided interesting services. Personally, I was a fan of Katrina's fortune-telling and how it affected your day in New Leaf. 
Another cool concept from New Leaf that's gone is the Nintendo items. Opening a fortune cookie and turning in the paper fortune would give you a Nintendo themed item, and there were 52 unique items you could win randomly. This was one of my favorite concepts in New Leaf, and I wanted to collect all of them. I figured they'd return New Horizons since they were too cool to not include again, yet that doesn't seem to be the case. Maybe they'll add items on those series anniversaries as a limited time event, like maybe a Master Sword for Zelda's 35th anniversary next year. That'd be awesome. Make it happen, Nintendo. Yet another part of New Leaf was diving for deep sea creatures. I found this feature's lack of inclusion to be strange, as water is kind of important for an island. Like, it's literally half of what makes an island an island. In all seriousness, it was a missed opportunity to have deep sea diving in New Horizons as it would fit right in with the game's overall nature. At the very least, make some of the living creatures available to fish up and donate to the museum so their models will have a use outside of New Leaf. Say it with me kids, another concept that was in New Leaf was multiplayer functionality. However, I'm not talking about island visiting. New Leaf featured minigames available via Tortimer Island, and they were relatively fun to play with friends. Meanwhile, in New Horizons, there's nothing of the sort. Fortunately, some more creative people have come up with their own minigames like Miss Kylie's Animal Crossing Olympics. If you wanted to see how that exciting event went, go to the link down below and it'll take you to our Twitch channel with the video. While you're there, you may as well drop a follow because she is a great streamer. Okay, so besides a few missing NPCs and features here and there, this game is surely perfect in every other way, right? Well, unfortunately, there are some big issues that this game suffers from. One of the two big issues that plagues this game is that there is one save file. You can only have one island, not per game card, but one island per Switch. Meaning if you wanted to have another island of your own, you'd have to purchase another Nintendo Switch and a copy of the game. Obviously, not a lot of people are willing to shell out $400 for another Switch and another copy of Animal Crossing. So this is a major issue for families who can only afford one Switch, but want to play the same game in their own ways. In my case, I'm the only gamer in my house, so I haven't run into this problem, but I can 100% understand the frustration if you're living with fellow Animal Crossing fans. This issue, among others, has been addressed in more detail in this video titled The Nintendo Effect, How to Screw Up Fun for Everyone. I highly, highly recommend giving that a watch as it's incredibly informative about these kinds of issues on Nintendo's end. If you want to watch that, click the eye icon in the top right corner. If you're on mobile, a link will be in the description below. The second big problem I've chosen to highlight is the lack of cloud saves. For those unaware, purchasing a subscription to Nintendo Switch Online allows you to back up your save data via the cloud. However, New Horizons has limited access to this feature, only allowing for save data recovery if your Switch is lost, stolen, or suffers from a system failure. This lack of a feature caused an uproar prior to the game's release, as people believed this should be open like many other games that utilize cloud saves. According to an interview with French media outlet GameCult, New Horizons producer Higashi Nogami stated that this feature was implemented the way it was to avoid manipulating time. It's very plain to see that this didn't work, as time traveling is still a common practice even in the latest series entry. Overall, I think Animal Crossing New Horizons is in many ways an upgrade for the series in every sense of the word. I mean, one of the biggest reasons this review came out as late as it did was because I was playing the game so much and genuinely enjoying my time, and I'm still sinking at least an hour into it every day. Yes, the breaking tools are irritating, and yeah, some of my favorite features or NPCs didn't return from New Leaf, but what we ended up with was so compelling that it almost makes up for those flaws, with the exception of the aforementioned save system, as well as a few quality of life improvements that would just make this game all the better. I know it's been said a million times, but bulk crafting is just one of those things that needs to be in the game. Minecraft was able to pull it off so well in such a simple way, there's no reason New Horizons can't adopt a similar concept and apply it to their game. I hope to see these improvements made in the near future, but until then, I'm gonna keep playing and getting into even more debt by Tom Nook. Thanks for watching my Animal Crossing New Horizons review. Previously, this actually came out late because of the COVID-19 crisis, but also a lack of motivation over the summer made it 
come out as late as it did, so I very much apologize for this. I hope that nothing like this happens again, and I hope to resume a somewhat regular upload schedule. So thanks for sticking around, and I hope to see you in the next one.